Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KitBatcher.com, out here for a little loadout, recent Runation Vehicular Dominance and Survival, as well as Vehicular right. Carbine Employment Course. Big picture for that day one of Vehicular Dominance and Survival, what was I wearing? This right here. Kind of a come as you are class. Not centered around the idea of, hey, you're dressing up to go like play at the range, but hey, you're dressing up because this is how you usually dress. To that end, some sweet board shorts by Tactical Distributors. Same with this shirt. New hat from Spiritus and Crocs. Because some days I roll out in board shorts and Crocs and a t-shirt and a hat. Ipso facto, that's what I wore for the course. Which brings us to the rest of our gear for that first day. Brought everything in this PDW, their CC12 cargo container, I believe it is. One of these made it really handy to basically have everything in one spot. And going back to what I was wearing, board shorts, how are you gonna carry a gun? Well, no, that's a real thing because I sometimes wear board shorts, go swimming with my boys, stuff like that. So not really conducive to a belt or a belt with a holster for that matter. So taking a different approach, ended up actually using this. This is the Spiritus Systems. I think it's their Mark III fanny pack. I think they have a different name for it, but ultimately it's a fanny pack. Pretty small, pretty low profile. It actually does a really good job, fits one of their solo kits, one of their tourniquets fits right in, or tourniquets, one of their actual med kits rather fits in here. But I decided to basically carry my pistol in here and also my magazines and my tourniquet. Usually this is the RMT tourniquet. Usually I'll basically have it in a pocket and wanting to have a tourniquet on me. The way this is set up, you have these loops down here and you can essentially cinch it down and then pull it, the shot cord comes loose, retrieve your tourniquet. So I was able to have my tourniquet on here. And then also trusty Amtac Northman, basically just inside of my waistline of these board shorts. And then yeah, had this guy here. So I needed a pistol that I could basically carry in here, carry it safely and ended up with this piece of German engineering. This right here, pretty awesome pistol. This piece of German engineering is amazing. HK P7M8, pretty sure this was handcrafted back in like 1989 or something like that. They stopped making them, I think early 90s. Incredible pistol single little stack, eight round magazine, really thin, really low bore axis, and very safe to carry. Right there, it's cocked, there, it's decocked. So it takes about 12 pounds of pressure to cock it, there's the striker, at which point you can actually fire it. And since it was basically gonna be sitting in here, went ahead and ran this gun inside here. And then I would have this piece. Forget the name of these beads, they're pretty awesome. They actually glow in the dark in case you want to go to a rave later. But I had this one over here so I could draw across with my strong hand. So I could basically draw out one handed. And if need be, I could of course run this across with my other strong hand. And then up front, I would keep two spare magazines in there and have this over on that side. So Going to reload, I can pull this across with my strong hand, retrieve magazines, do that. All in all, this setup actually worked really well. It gave me access, not super quick, but fairly quickly to my pistol. And it also pretty inconspicuous, especially with the rest of my attire. This pistol did amazing when I did my part. I haven't shot it for probably over a year. And I probably honestly haven't shot a pistol with irons for about over a year. And some of the shots, a little long, a little bit spicy, but as long as I was doing my part, it worked well. One thing I will say, all steel pistol, transfers heat. It got really hot. And by the end of it, this piece right here, which is the takedown, it's pretty smooth, but 
Again, transferring heat and a different grip than I usually had. Ended up with pretty nasty blister right there. I don't know if it was a burn or a wear or a combination of the two, but that definitely happened going through probably about 350 rounds, I think over the course of the day with this pistol, but pretty sweet setup. I actually really liked it. And lastly, some of my gear that I use not only on day one, but also day two. Those being my glasses, prescription lenses, ballistic, Smith Director Elite, I believe, from Smith Optics. Use those, been using them for quite a while. Probably need to check that prescription. And then for ammo, some of the ammo I was using was some kind of leftover G9 bullets training ammo. And then was also shooting this, the Barnall Subsonic 151 grain. Did really good in that gun. And Ear Pro, these guys right here, which is my amp headset by OpsCore with my boom mic. Ivan, why did you have your boom mic on and no down lead to a radio? Because I couldn't find the little piece that basically covers that port and I didn't want to leave it uncovered so decided to rock my boom mic. But I will say these did a great job. One, they're super comfortable and on top of that, one of the important things is these being active hearing protection. They'll basically cut off after a certain decibel threshold. So amplified hearing protection rather. And why is that important? Well, if you show up to a class, it allows you to basically keep your ear pro on and still be able to hear all the range commands, whether it's a period of instruction or in the middle of a drill or something like that. If someone's trying to call out commands to you. I mean, what are the three pillars, right? Shoot, move, communicate. And this facilitates that. So did a great job for me. Which brings us to day two, which was the vehicular carbine employment. Why not have two guns? One was basically brought up as a backup, get into that more, but this right here was my backup, Honey Badger pistol with the trash pan, the silencer, Valhalla tactical, light body and head, and EOTech on here. This being my primary. Honey Badger SD with the Surefire XVL2 IRC, micro T2 aim point and a Unity Tactical mount. The wrap on here is by Lunar Concepts, their Hot Pocket, pretty clutch, especially putting a lot of rounds through this. And then for a sling over here, have the Sierra Tech, I guess it is, made by Lunar Concepts, sold by Lunar Concepts. And yeah, this was my primary. Day two being that carbine employment means we're drawing this thing out. So as I mentioned, the Sierra Tac sling, basically have it secured with a piece of tube from like a bike tire that I cut off. Works pretty good. Secure the sling, because again, when we draw this thing out, we don't want it to get snagged on stuff. And to that end, not all backpacks are created equal. A lot of backpacks will have kind of some sort of like mesh interior, which basically turns into a snag hazard for anything you put on there. Ended up using this that Vertex sent out. It is their Gamut Overland. I think it's probably one of their larger packs. And some notable nice things about it. One, there's enough material at the bottom where when this is pushing down, it maybe looks like something's there, but it doesn't look like a straight up muzzle is trying to punch out the bottom of your backpack. And it's also large enough fortunately, to where it will actually fit this gun. And then bring the zippers around and pretty nondescript. I mean, it's a black backpack, doesn't have pals webbing. And as I found out, this pack is big enough to fit two guns, which is good, especially if you end up having to do a New York reload with honey badgers. Then beyond my guns and that bag, we had kind of other gear. So yes, it was a carving course largely, but we still had a secondary because sometimes you need a backup. And to that end, I ended up using this, which is my SIG P365 XL, Surefire XSC, I believe it is, and then 507K maybe. By Holosun, little optic on there, and ended up shooting this. Did a great job for me. 
This is a special treat going back to a red dot after shooting that P7 and 8 and I thought about shooting it again but what it came down to was one getting some more reps on this which I usually carry more than my P7 and in addition to that giving my hand a break. That big blister was still there. Spent the day with a big band-aid over it but for it I was using this holster by Black Point Tactical FO3 Ford of 3 and I was actually running that on this belt. This is by First Spear. It's some sort of weird synthetic material. It's actually really strong and durable no matter how hot and sweaty you get like it won't it's pretty much resistant to everything. It's not going to end up taking on any moisture or anything like that. Works really good and since I wasn't wearing board shorts, I could actually wear that. And since I wasn't wearing board shorts and my fanny pack, RMT tourniquet, this time basically in a thigh pocket, and my Amtac Northman once again in my right hand pocket. And I ended up wearing these shorts right here by Prometheus Design Works. I think it's their new ones, guide cloth shorts. These, probably not my favorite cut. They have these cargo pockets and not super conducive to shoving magazines in because they Velcro, so I had to figure out something else. Which brings us to managing and carrying the ammunition. As I mentioned, not a huge fan of those pockets on that cut of shorts by PDW, so how am I gonna carry magazines? Because otherwise, you're basically pulling them out of your bag, shoving them in pockets. Didn't want to do it with those shorts, and figured I'd try this out. This is made by Unobtainium Gear, and pretty sweet low pro chest rig. You got this strap back here, secures there, and you are left with basically a really low pro, nothing up front, chest rig where you can basically have four different like AR pattern magazines. And then on front or in front of each cell is a smaller cell so you can put pistol magazines if you want. And because of the way it's sewn, you can have pistol mags by themselves, which I did have at a certain point during that course as well. And again, low pro, cross the front. Hey, but it looks like you probably have something on. Yeah, it probably does. But ended up wearing this sweet cover shirt by Tactical Distributors, Aloha shirt. And regardless of what cover shirt you wear, when you end up wearing something like this, let me get it all squared up, even if it's open in the front, they're like, oh, there's some guy that probably threw his back out and is wearing a back brace. Or you could obviously wear a black t-shirt with black set up here to where you also have black Velcro, probably disappear even more. But big picture, even if this thing's buttoned up, it's not obtrusive, especially depending on what cells I actually put my magazines in because I can move them even further back. So I ended up running this rig and basically clear the garment, reach in, grab my mags, conduct my reloads from there. Worked out really well. Then after day one, I was like, you know what? Kind of got a lot of gravel in my Crocs. Why not try some shoes? So I ended up wearing these. These are the Chillum by Limbs really comfortable zero drop super flexible cork insole awesome shoes spoiler still got gravel in them and the gravel was easier to get out with my crocs crocs are pretty awesome once you engage four wheel drive and that little piece that goes over your heel you can move pretty good in them and easier to get the gravel out but that's what i wore on day two some of you are probably wondering ivan why did you have two honey badgers in your backpack? New York Reload. If one goes down, you just grab the other one. So why would that happen? Well, because of this. Let me preface this with Minimin Munitions, awesome people over there. They've done a great job for me in the past and everything like that. And this year for the Coast to Coast Tour, I basically was like, hey, I need to secure like 5,000 rounds of 300 blackout for the tour. And they came through for me, super grateful for it. Regrettably, 2021 has been a horrible year for QC. And as a result of that, Apex Brass, I believe that's who they use, basically the brass is out of spec. And so it's really thin up here, 
probably because they're trying to just cheap out. And what happens is case separation. Not like you rip the back of the case off, but like part of the shoulder up here basically gets ripped off. And it happened all the way across the country on the Coast to Coast tour. Again, it was a known issue. They were super upfront about it. Like, hey, we found this out because they had loaded a bunch of ammo into this brass. And then basically it was discovered, like it didn't come up during their initial load development and testing. And then when it did come up, it was like, hey, like we have like your 5,000 rounds sitting here and this is a known issue. And I was like, well, I either have 300 black out of shoot or I don't. So I appreciate you guys being upfront and honest. Bummer, go ahead and ship it. So I had all this stuff. And what can happen is, so come out all mangled and everything, like the case, whatever, doesn't matter. But occasionally some of this brass will get stuck in there, like a little ring of it essentially. And the next round will come in, it won't go fully in the battery. So sometimes you can clear it out, you pull this out, and there'll basically be like a halo of brass around the projectile. And other times, like it's in there and you're gonna need to mortar the thing out and then drop a cleaning rod or in my case, somewhere in here, basically a uh, something to essentially get that piece out. A boar snake is what I usually end up using. Known issue, bummer. So one, I got a lot of really good reps being like, oh, can't fix that. Transitioning to the pistol or later in the game where I'm like, okay, I want to get through like the carbine portion of this. And so if and when the gun went down, boom, New York reload, pull out the backup gun, go to work. So unfortunate, but got a lot of really good reps from it and yeah, ultimately made it work. Go. Having said all this, what are my thoughts on this loadout? Honestly, this stuff worked really well and to the purpose at hand, i.e. showing up with how you are and making your stuff work. What do I mean by that? Well, running around during the summer with my boys, like board shorts, Crocs, maybe, maybe not a t-shirt, which if you want to carry a pistol, eh, like how are you going to conceal that in, in our fanny pack? Thing actually works great. And being able to actually get meaningful reps with that in a way that end up essentially carrying myself and dressing out during warmer days. That first day, it was like over a hundred there on the range, day one. Glad I was dressed like that. Board shorts and Crocs. And being able to get those meaningful reps. So coming into it, like, hey, this is a low pro course. Like, what are you gonna potentially be wearing? Low pro. All right, well, right there. Rather than, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my comped Glock 17 with Acro and X400 on it. You're like, wow, you really carry that everything? Oh, no, but I shoot this gun the best. Okay, like, all right, do your thing, man. Rather than going to get meaningful reps with maybe a gun that you are actually carrying. And so, yeah, day one, shooting irons, and then day two, for my secondary, shooting at P365XL and getting those meaningful reps. And day two, that loadout worked really well for me to include this gun, really awesome, fun gun to shoot, being able to deploy it out of the bag. And yeah, across the board, I think everything honestly did a really good job. Even the ammo, would have loved to have all of it had shot, but you know what, free reps, basically working malfunctions, transitions, stuff like that. And there is value to be had there as well. So overall pleased with pretty much everything I was out there with. But if you have any questions for me, happy to answer them over on Patreon. We actually have an active Discord. Happy to answer all of your questions over there. Probably not down in the comments. And speaking of Patreon, if you appreciate my content and want to support it, help me get out there, create more content for you. Super grateful for it. And Patreon is one of the ways you can do that. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah,